Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So one of my resolutions for 2021 is to be more active on my Instagram and my YouTube channel. So to start off this year, I will be giving a tour of my Notion workspace. In this video, I'll be showing you the different pages that I use, how Notion has been really helpful, and I'll also be giving a quick little tutorial on how I use Notion. To start off, we'll be taking a look at my homepage. A homepage usually acts as the central hub for where you can access all of the main pages that you use, simple to-do lists, and then maybe even a calendar of the different events and upcoming tasks that you have. So what's really cool about Notion is that you can customize it however you want. So for mine, I like to have a cover at the top, which I made. This one's just a Snoopy one that says, finish your damn work. And then you can add even a little icon for that page, a title. And then there's so many different commands and blocks that you can include. And one of them is actually a quote. So my quote is, it's 2021. And then beneath it, this is when you can get super creative and organize your motion however you want. For mine, I created a little table of contents where I have these thematic photos of just different cartoons that I really like that fit my color scheme, and then links to the most frequent pages that I visit. So as you can see, I have some for academics and then some for just other random things that I have. So if you click on one of these links, it will take you to another page in your sidebar. And that's another thing that you can do on Notion, which is creating backlinks, and you can link it to different pages that you want to access from another page. Beneath that, I have a to-do list, and this is where I just write out basic tasks I need to do. They don't really fall under a particular category for school, so they kind of just sit over here, and I'll do them when I'm able to get to them. And then beneath that, I have a monthly overview calendar, and this is where I keep track of all of my events and upcoming tests and assignments. Next up, we have my winter break page, and this page is the one I've been using the most for these past few weeks, and typically anytime there's a long holiday at school, I like to set up one of these because there isn't much homework for specific courses, but there is other extracurriculars that I would like to complete during that time. So I set up a little goal section, and then I just do a daily calendar where I can put in all of the different to-dos that I have to do that day. So today one of them is to film my Notion video. And this has just been super helpful because I didn't really have much homework from school, but I had so many random things lying around that didn't really fit into any of my academic pages. During the school year, I do use my academic overview page the most. And this is really helpful because it breaks down all of my tasks by course and then by type of task. So as you can see, I have all of the different courses and also what we're learning in that course and then I have a section for my to-dos, lesson reminders or notes depending on if that class requires any notes, and then upcoming assignments and tests. So in your to-do section there's an option to create a checkbox and I'll just type in what that task is and then you have lesson reminders so anytime I have a note about the lesson such as let's say I need to ask my teacher a question I'll just write down there and then I'll remember to do it the next time I check my notion page. And then lastly, I have assignments and tests. And this relates back to my study tracker and my assignment tracker because I'm able to link the different assignments and the sub pages within that to my academic overview. So my study tracker and my assignment tracker act pretty similar. They both use tables that allow me to keep track of the test, assignments, and just anything that I have in that course. I don't really like to use tables in my academic overview because I find that it is pretty tedious to work with and it's a lot to look at. So I like having these larger chunks for my academic overview and then another one where it's more divided and I have each task with its own row in my trackers. So for my study tracker, I have this option where I write down what I need to study. So I have all of these different options. Let's say I had to do a practice test from the textbook and then I had to do some and I had to do like some textbook worksheet questions, then I would just check that off. And then when I'm done, I remove it. So the study tracker has been super helpful because sometimes tests, they're going to happen a week in advance and you need to know what you want to do for that. And usually tests, they are ongoing. You don't just study one day. So this is really good because you can just leave this on here and then you know to do your study notes for let's say five days and then you can remove that after rather than creating a new checkbox every single day in the academic overview. 
The assignment tracker works the exact same way, except that we have statuses, so you have different stages, so like brainstorming, then the researching, then the writing, and all that jazz over here. And what I really like about Notion is that you can create pages within pages within pages. So what I like to do is that I write down the different checkpoints that I have of that task, and then also the any reminders or rules that I need to consider for that assignment. So I would just put that right on, right on the side. And this is how you break down your assignments because typically assignments are very big and there's so many, many tasks that go in between. So it's nice to see a general overview of that assignment. And what's really nice about Notion is that they just introduced this timeline feature. So you can even assign a date for when you want to finish things. So they have these different cards and you can see how long each part will take. And how it goes back to my academic overview is that I link it on this section and I write down the date next to it. And that pretty much sums up everything I have for school on my Notion. Moving on, we have the extracurriculars. I don't really use my extracurricular pages too much. I have about four of them in the sidebar. But it's really nice because sometimes you're too focused on school, let's say, and you need to leave a task for later in the week. And if you don't want to forget it, you can just put it into your extracurriculars. And then I go back to it and I see what I need to get done that week. So I have stuff for my general extracurriculars, volunteering, and then piano. This next page is something that I made for my New Year's resolution. I want to track what I'm spending because I tend to be an impulsive buyer on Amazon. But it's really nice to see where you're allocating all of the money that you're spending and where you can definitely cut back. So you can just log in the item and then the amount and then the date and the category. And in that amount, what's really cool about Notion is that they have so many functions. So in this column, I actually am having it add up the sum of each of my purchases. And that way I can see the final price of all of my purchased items combined and then we'll also count how many items I purchased that month and then every single month I will just add in a new table right below it where I will do the exact same thing but for February. And now we just have some bonus pages of extra things that I keep on the back burner because I don't need to access them too often but they are necessary for storage and just making sure my Notion workspace stays tidy. And my high school archive is currently empty because nothing's finished yet, but I have everything organized for a semester. So when I'm done my winter break, it would just go into semester one. And this way I can reference things about when stuff happened, what tasks I finished on what day. But if I don't want it on the sidebar, since it's technically inactive, I would just move it over here. And that way it's hidden away, but it's still accessible. And lastly, I just have external resources and course directory. These are just extra links and info that I don't really need too often, but I just put it there because I was bored one day and in case I need it at any point. And that pretty much sums up my entire Notion tour. I try to keep my Notion as simple and minimalistic as possible, just so that I'm not hunting around for any pages or any documents that is hidden somewhere in a sub page. For my Notion, I do try to keep a theme for it. So my theme is just cute cartoons that follow a beige and pinkish sort of color scheme. And that's why you see a lot of like these brown headers and a lot of these like, cartoons up here, just because it's nice to customize your own Notion. So you can add in images um, and just like any text and emojis that you like. And that way your Notion is suited for you. I'm still in the works of figuring out how to turn my Notion pages into templates because I'm not that tech savvy and I don't know how long it's going to take until I figure it out. But I will be linking how you can download Notion down below in the description box and any other resources that I have. But I will be ending off with a tutorial about how you can use Notion just because Notion has so many different functions and sometimes it's hard to keep track of all of them and understand how you can use them. So the first thing that you can do is just create a new page and there's so many options to customize that page. You can do that by font, text size, and then the width of the overall page. And then there's a bunch of these other uh, options that I don't really use too often, but they are helpful if by accident you make a mistake. And let's say you need to look at the page history. So 
those are things that you can use to customize your notion to your liking. So you can add your own icon and then also your own cover for that page. And then beneath it, you would just type in a slash to get a command and then there's so many options. So there's options to create headers, lists, toggles, anything like that. But the coolest part is all of these templates that they have. So there are boards and galleries and lists. I don't use all of them. I mainly just stick with tables, calendars, and timelines. But if you ever want to try them out, they have these status boards and then they also have a gallery. And galleries are really helpful when you're collaborating with other people because each one can get their own page. So how I typically set up my Notion pages is by creating a header and then some text features beneath it. I like to organize everything into columns because I find the page width is really wide. So what I'll do is that I'll type in heading three. I notice the heading one is a bit big for me. And then I will just pick a color. So you can do, you can change the text color or you can change the text background. So all of the color options are down here. You can make any color that you want. I like to keep it black, but add a background. And then I like to use bullet features. I also like to use text boxes, just regular text boxes beneath that. And then also the to-do list. These are super helpful. We'll just type in gibberish. And that's what I keep down there. And then sometimes you would want to keep everything compact. For me, I like to see everything out in the open, but this is another option if you want to hide things in this and then toggle it to open it up. So to create columns, which is something I usually do, you would just drag something to the side and then it's super easy to do that. And you can just create as many columns as you want. And that's pretty much it. I know this tutorial was really quick, but I do recommend downloading Notion and just fidgeting with all of the different features and seeing what you like and what you don't like. And at first I had a lot of trouble with using Notion because I found that there were just so many features to use and a lot of them I didn't know how to use. However, the more time you spend on it, Notion will start to grow on you and you will find your own way to maximize your Notion workspace and what works best for you. So that is all for today and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I definitely recommend checking out Notion because there is so many things that you can do on it and you can sync it across multiple devices. I'll definitely be posting more Notion updates on my YouTube channel and my Instagram account. So make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram to stay updated with those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.